After you finish watching today's video, you'll be more motivated and more confident in your preps. Why? Because today I'm going to share with you all my favorite quotes related to prepping. You see, I'm a bit of a collector of quotes and enjoy dissecting their meaning. That's why I'll also share my own thoughts on these quotes, like what they mean to me and why they matter, hopefully making these prepper quotes come alive. Hey, I'm Jack, and I'm the co-founder of SkilledSurvival.com, and I've been sharing my preparedness thoughts, ideas, strategies, and tactics since 2013 online. Now I'm growing our YouTube channel, so if you enjoy this type of content, take a moment to subscribe and hit the bell notification. Okay. Let's jump into the first quote, Teddy Roosevelt. If you're an American, you probably already know the sort of man Teddy Roosevelt was. He was the 26th president of the United States and was an avid hunter, explorer, and adventurer. He also obviously understood the extreme value of being prepared with the following, quote, make preparations in advance. You never have trouble if you're prepared for it, end quote. It's a simple short quote that hits you directly in the face. Prepare in advance or prepare for trouble. You choose. George S. Patton. George S. Patton is another famous American who's known as an exuberant and triumphant World War II general. I don't think it's a coincidence that some of the most successful historical generals understood the power of preparedness. It's a job where your preparedness or lack of it, is continuously being tested. War generals have actual skin in the game, where preparedness can mean the difference between success or death. Here's Patton's best quote related to being prepared. Quote, Prepare for the unknown by studying how others in the past have coped with the unforeseeable and the unpredictable. End quote. Of course, the future is unforeseeable and unpredictable, especially disasters and rare black swan type events. This includes wars. That's why the best war generals are obsessed with the tactics and strategies of past generals. It's all about mental preparedness, like playing a deadly game of chess. You can only become a master if you analyze the past champions, like why they moved when they did, or how they got fooled by their enemy. The bottom line is, Patton understood the immense power of preparing for the unknowable future. Carl Sagan Carl Sagan was best known as an astronomer, a planetary scientist, cosmologist, an astrophysicist, an astrobiologist, an author, and a science communicator. Now, I have no idea if Carl Sagan was a prepper or not, but this quote of his is sure profound and related to preparedness. Quote, Extinction is the rule, survival the exception. End quote. Carl understood just how amazing it is that we've survived to this point, that humans survive long enough to communicate with each other. But we should never just rejoice in that fact. We must continue to be vigilant and ready for the unknowable future. To be resilient to any future disaster, and to have any hope of continuing to be the exception and not become the rule. The Holy Bible. Of course, the Bible has several wise quotes about the virtues of preparedness and prudence. The Bible is chocked full of real world wisdom if you take the time to read it and understand it. You'll find much wisdom related to preparedness in the book of Proverbs. What's a proverb? It's a short, pithy truth or piece of advice. Here are three proverbs to ponder on. Quote, He who works the land will have abundant food, but the ones who chase his fantasies will have his fill of poverty. End quote. Next, Proverbs 27, 12. A prudent person takes precautions. The simpleton goes blindly on and suffers the consequences. And Proverbs 21, 20, quote, In a house of the wise are stores of choice food and oil, but a foolish man devours all he has, end quote. So as you can tell, all three of these biblical quotes are related to working hard, being prudent, especially when times are good, and curbing your human appetites by storing some of your foods and treasures for the future. Stephen King 
Stephen King is one of my all-time favorite fiction writers. He intertwines deep and complex characters with intriguing, mind-bending circumstances. He's known for such great books as The Stand, The Shining, It, Needful Things, Carrie, Salem's Lot, and the Dark Tower series, to name a few. I believe Stephen's got one of the best imaginations in the world, so when he speaks of preparedness, I listen. Quote, There's no harm in hoping for the best, as long as you're prepared for the worst. What's really interesting is if you flip the logic of that quote, it's essentially saying that if you avoid preparing for the worst, there's actual harm in hoping for the best. Let that sink in for one minute. The harm is in foolishly and blindly relying on hope instead of preparedness first. Only after you're ready is the idea of hope peace, prosperity, etc., harmless. Spencer W. Kimball. Spencer Kimball was an American business, civic, and religious leader in the 20th century. He was the 12th president of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. So it's not extremely surprising to find the following preparedness quote from one of their leaders. Quote, Preparedness, when properly pursued, is a way of life, not a sudden spectacular program. This quote gets to the heart of what I call living a resilient life. It's not something you do in a flurry and then abandon. It's a way of life. It's something you work on little by little over time by building up your stockpiles, your skills, and your knowledge every day. If you're interested in learning more, check out The Resilient Life. It's a community of folks working on their own preparedness journey. It's also a program that teaches, motivates, and allows you to track your preparedness progress. Links are in the description below. Benjamin Franklin. Benjamin Franklin is full of pithy one-liners. Their common sense wisdom summed up clearly, concisely, making them easy to remember. So if you ever come across someone who thinks preparedness is for wackos, then bust out the following quotes to shut them up. Quote, An ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. Okay, next. Quote, by failing to prepare, you are preparing to fail. And last, quote, when the well is dry, you know the worth of water. End quote. It amazes me just how much wisdom is packed into such few words. He truly understands the value of preparedness and conveys it in a way that ends all counter arguments. Being prepared, being resilient is a wise way to live. Abraham Lincoln. The next preparedness quote is from the 16th president of the United States, Abraham Lincoln. Lincoln was known as one of the best American presidents for guiding a nation through a civil war and all the turmoil that comes with it. He was a humble man who grew up in extreme poverty, but those early years and struggles taught him the value of self-reliance, hard work, and preparation. For example, he once said, quote, Give me six hours to chop down a tree, and I'll spend the first four sharpening the axe. End quote. In essence, given any challenging task, he would spend the majority of his time preparing for it rather than doing it. He understood the immense value of preparation, how it can often lead to better results with less effort. Work smarter, not harder. Great for prepping, as well as all sorts of challenges in life. Bob Knight. Bob Knight, you either love him or you hate him. He's known for being one of basketball's most successful and innovative coaches. He led the Indiana men's basketball team to three NCAA championships, one NIT championship, and 11 Big Ten conference championships. And if you follow college basketball at all, you know he had an anger management issue and even famously threw a chair onto the basketball court during a game. But as far as preparation goes, he also said, quote, I don't believe in luck. I believe in preparation, end quote. Or, another way to say it, you make your own luck by preparing. Heck, if luck does happen to fall in your lap, you can only take full advantage of it if you're ready for it. Otherwise, it's likely you're going to fritter away the good fortune, missing a great opportunity. Alexander Graham Bell. 
Alexander Graham Bell was a Scottish-born inventor, scientist, and engineer. He was credited with inventing the telephone. He also co-founded AT&T in 1885. So by all measures, he understood the value of hard work and dedication, as well as preparedness. He famously said, quote, Before anything else, preparation is the key to success. End quote. If you want success in anything, you must prepare for it. He was talking about success in general and not necessarily prepping, but the idea applies. If you want to be resilient and survive any future obstacles, you must prepare ahead of time, before anything else. John F. Kennedy John F. Kennedy was the 35th President of the United States. He served at the height of the Cold War, and the majority of his time was spent dealing with tensions between the Soviet Union and Cuba. And he understood the value of preparedness with the following, quote, The time to repair the roof is when the sun is shining. End quote. He's absolutely right. The time to prepare is not after the disaster has arrived. After is too late. I witnessed this firsthand as the COVID-19 pandemic arrived in the United States. By the time everyone was freaking out, gas masks, water storage containers, freeze-dried food supplies, and medical supplies, etc., they were all gone. And prices of these critical pieces of survival gear were going through the roof. There is a severe penalty to being complacent when times are calm. Seneca the Younger. Okay, anyone who's a member of our survival and preparedness community, the resilient life, knows I'm a massive fan of Stoic philosophy. It's an ancient way to live rooted in training to be mentally resilient to all future obstacles and frustrations. It helps to put challenges and struggles and life into perspective. I think it's the best way to mentally prepare for future turmoil. Seneca the Younger was born in 4 BC and is credited with being a significant contributor to Stoic ideas. Quote, luck is what happens when preparation meets opportunity. End quote. So luck is not random. It's something that happens to those who put themselves in a position to take advantage of it. Okay, next. Quote, the person who has anticipated the coming of troubles takes away their power when they arrive. End quote. That's what preparedness is all about. It's removing the power troubles have over you. Preparedness is all about increasing confidence and reducing anxiety now and not being paranoid, but being vigilant. It's not a matter of if future turmoil is coming. It's just a matter of when. Okay, next. Quote, everyone faces up more bravely to a thing for which he has long prepared himself. Sufferings, even being withstood if they have been trained in advance. Those who are unprepared, on the other hand, are pain-stricken by the most insignificant happenings. End quote. I love the part about the unprepared being panic-stricken by the most ins insignificant happenings. Because preparing not only provides benefits for the extreme future turmoil, but it also allows you to put everyday insignificant happenings in their proper perspective. You become less anxious, worried, and less fragile when you live a resilient life. Okay, next quote. Quote, it's in times of security that the spirit should be preparing itself to deal with difficult times. While fortune is bestowing favors on it, then is the time for it to be strengthened against her rebuffs. End quote. This quote is similar to what John F. Kennedy said. Many modern historical quotes have roots in the ancient wisdom. Okay, the next quote from Seneca. Quote, Set aside now and then a number of days during which you will be content with the plainest of food and very little of it, and with rough, coarse clothing, and will ask yourself, is this what one used to dread? End quote. This final Seneca quote is pure stoicism. You can strengthen your mental resiliency by occasionally abandoning modern luxuries. Spend some time eating plain food, fasting, wearing rags, sleeping on hard floors, or taking cold showers, etc. Doing this does three things for you. First, it makes you realize that living without extreme luxuries is not as terrible as you make them out to be in your mind. Sure, it's not ideal, and it's a bit uncomfortable, but not something to dread and fret about continuously. 
Second, it also helps you appreciate and enjoy these luxuries more. It's sort of like cleansing your luxury palate. You feel more blessed and you have more gratitude towards the basic amenities in your life. And third, you can't be grateful and angry at the same time. The more gratitude you feel, the happier person you are. In my opinion, gratitude is the ultimate secret to happiness. Marcus Aurelius Marcus Aurelius was the Roman Empire from 161 to 180 and is considered one of the most famous students of Stoicism. His journals have survived and we get a glimpse into his daily mental challenges and Stoic practices. Here's one of his best prepper quotes. Quote, the art of living is more like wrestling than dancing, insofar as it stands ready against the accidental and the unforeseen and is not apt to fall. End quote. I think what he's saying is that to live a good life, you must always stand ready against the accidental and the unforeseen. And this is more like wrestling via hard work and dedication than dancing, having fun. Or perhaps he's saying it's better to invest in prudence first then to relax and enjoy life instead of the other way around. Howard Ruff Howard Ruff was a financial advisor and author. He wrote such books as How to Prosper During the Coming Bad Years and Survive and Win in the Inflationary 80s. Howard understood how important it is to prepare for the unknowable future and how history is full of tumultuous times. He sums it all up by saying, quote, it wasn't raining when Noah built the ark, end quote. Before hearing this quote, I never thought of Noah's ark story in that way. But much of the wisdom of the Bible is not spelled out explicitly. You must read between the lines to unlock the immense wisdom within. Noah's ark is more than just about preparedness. But trust and preparing are big underlying themes. Next is another proverb, but instead of the Bible, it's an ancient Chinese one. Because living a resilient life and preparing is not just a Western idea. Its roots can be found in all ancient philosophies. That's more proof that it's one of the best ways to live. Quote, better to light a candle than to curse the darkness. End quote. It's so true. And it reminds me of another quote by Teddy Roosevelt. Complain about a problem without posing a solution is called whining. End quote. When you find yourself in a difficult situation, cursing is less than worthless. It's pathetic. And here's the deal. You can only light a candle in the dark if you have a candle and a flame. That's preparedness, folks. That's doing something about a future turmoil before it arrives. So if you're still watching this video, you obviously enjoy this kind of content. So make sure you take a moment to subscribe to this channel to never miss a future video. And I also want to invite you to check out The Resilient Life. It's a community of prepared survivalists who are working towards living a more resilient life. It's a program that teaches and motivates and tracks your preparedness journey. If this sounds like something you'd be interested in, find the link in the description below and join us today. And until next time, prepare, adapt, and overcome.